Hello, Saggy. Welcome to Channel Rockeritaville. I'm L Rock, your hostess, and we are here to do your weekly timeless general energy read for the week ahead for the sun, moon, and rising sign of Sagittarius. As always, this is a general reading, so if the story that we pull out today isn't yours, you might check out your moon and rising sign or your other placements on the channel because there could be something there for you as well. And finally, I want to thank my new subscribers, my returning subscribers, and all of those just popping in to check out the channel. Thank you for being here. Your likes, shares, subscribes, and comments all help the channel grow. So thank you for being a part of Rockeritaville. And with that said, Sagittarius, let's take a look at your most influential energy for the week ahead for Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Most influential energy for the week ahead. Sag, we're using a mixed deck. This is um, plant and animal energy and it's the illustrated herbiary and bestiary decks so that's what we're starting out with Sagittarius most influential energy okay Vervain you had this come out I'm positive this was you about releasing rigidity and letting letting things go and being able to yeah, I feel positive. I think this is a takeoff reading from a previous Sag read. You might check out last week's um, or the week before. I don't remember which. Uh, Vervain, er, yeah, Valerian, sorry. Valerian is here. Release rigidity. Interesting. And self-healing, ripple outward. I feel feel like interesting this feels very familiar saggy what else do we have this is um a long running energy um this is did we pull a cycle card for you last time because this is um part of that cycle i think oh goodness cards everywhere okay so we have everything that we need um we had the human come out. Remember forgetting. Red clover. Ground and center. White-tailed deer. Pause, assess, and act. So let's kind of see what this story is building out to be at the bottom of the deck. Spotted skunk. Stand up for yourself. So, um... Saggy, this is the second try at your reading, and um, the stand-up for yourself is a little bit of a pattern. So, I don't know, I don't really know what's coming out, I don't know yet, but let's find out. So, remember forgetting, ground and center, what was there? Remember forgetting is similar to, oh, be yourself. Yes. Okay. So in the earlier reading that I started for you, Daisy came out as your most influential energy. And she was all about being yourself and um, your authenticity shining through, um, regardless of popular belief that there was a lot of spiritual energy surrounding you just to give you highlights of that. So in terms of remembering forgetting or remember forgetting with human is um, it in the story in the book, it talks about how humans have forgotten their connection with mother nature, with plants and animals and all things, how all life is connected, not just the prioritization of human life. And so there's a couple aspects here, right? Because you are remembering, not only are you remembering, but you're tapping into Sagittarius, your connection with all of life, plants, animals. You might be having um, communications with, you know, things other than humans, right? Um, and that is not something that's odd or something that's weird. That's something that's very real. You know, animal whispers, they're real. Why wouldn't plant whispers be real, right? It's all about energy. Everything is energy. It's not about the words we speak. 
and we can transfer and share energy with mother nature and we forget our connection to that and when we forget that connection to mother nature we we lose our access to be able to heal ourselves our minds our bodies our souls and so with remember forgetting um the reason i brought up daisy is i think there's a couple storylines here is that Daisy was talking about being yourself and tapping into old aspects of yourself that you've set aside to become something that maybe you're not entirely aligned with Sagittarius. And so what it's also asking you to do is, sorry, the cat came by for a visit in your earlier reading and left a lot of hairs behind. So um, you're remembering those aspects of yourself that you want to tap back into. And as we talk about the connection with all things in life, you're tapping into those things that bring you life, Sagittarius. So remember what you've forgotten about things that you loved. Maybe go through old journals or old pictures or even old movies or read old books. Go back and remind yourself about an aspect of yourself that you want to bring forward that may be left behind and or altogether forgotten, okay? As you do this, this brings your self-healing out, right? You're that drop in the pond, and as you begin to remember those things, it also gives you the opportunity to enlighten those around you, Saggy. So your ripple outward is as you do this healing work, staying ground and centered in your heart space with red clover, and we've got the honeybees here, um, you know, making their appearance as they like to do here. Uh, Self-healing, um, your, your remembrance of what you have forgotten um, brings that healing. It keeps you grounded. You then become the role model and you begin to model these techniques and these integrations for those around you. You could very well be a healer of some sort, Sagittarius. And in terms of releasing rigidity, um, I'm not entirely sure why that message is back. I think that this is a message for somebody out there. Um, this card's not speaking to me as you're overarching in a major way like the other cards are. Um, but whatever it is that you're being rigid or stringent about, um, you can release that. You can let it go. It's okay to have more than one truth. It's okay to have one more than one opinion. And that includes conflicting opinions, right? That's what makes us thinkers. That what That's what makes us step outside the box and realize that life is not black and white. So this, this rigid stance that you're taking on some, on something, you're just invited to kind of release that energy a little bit and say, how might I be more available to another point of view here? Um, so that's what's coming through with that. And then with white-tailed deer, we have pause, assess, and act. So whatever it is that you're working towards, oh, I gotcha. So bottom of the deck, um, spotted skunk. So the pause, assess, act message with white-tailed deer here is, that before you stand up for yourself, it's okay to take a moment. Um, you're being invited to be mindful of, are you potentially having a remotion, emotional response to something, or are you having a logical response and acting accordingly by setting boundaries? If you're reacting, then um, you know your outcomes might not be as solid. If you're being proactive and self-aware and thinking before you're acting, it gives you a greater sense of emotional control and takes us back to Red Clover here and keeps you grounded in any situation that might be upcoming for you where you feel a sense of defensiveness around the conversation, the topic, whatever it may be. And um, Spotted Skunk is here to remind you that, um, you know, his, his sort of battle stance is, is that he'll do a handstand first to give you fair warning, and then he'll spray, right? So if Little Skunk starts walking on his hands, 
you know that maybe you better stop, right? So this is giving you that opportunity to pause and assess or give a warning by doing a handstand first before you act and spray um, your malodorous scent all over the situation. So, and um, that scent may be completely called for, only you're going to know that Sagittarius and don't think for a minute that it's not appropriate to spray at times because it absolutely is. However, it's more appropriate to be a mature skunk rather than a little skunk that is just sort of spraying at everything because it doesn't know yet. You have the maturity and the mindfulness to decide how to approach it rather than reacting to it. All right, interesting. Can I get some clarification for Valerian, please? Clarification for Valerian. Meditation, the Hermit, Sideways. Sideways cards indicate a wobble to me. So we've got two sideways coming out. We'll see what landed over Spotted Skunk here. Can you see the cards? We can see them better now-ish. Okay. So. We have the Hermit. Um, upright. The hermit is in meditation, it's in mindfulness, it's remembering, forgetting, it's creating that ripple outward um, through energetic healing and being grounded and centered in the heart space with red clover. When it's in the reversed position, it's in isolation. It is, um, well, the opposite of all the things that we just talked about. So be mindful in the week ahead, Sagittarius. Are you isolating yourself or rather in a state of meditation where eventually you're going to act on it, right? Being in the mind space for too long without taking action creates stagnation. And so with that, the hermit here with the wobble is reminding you to keep it upright, to go into meditation and create those those internal effects that will then you will walk out to create your external effects. So release rigidity around spending too much time in meditation, thus evolving it into isolation. Um, the other card that kind of came out was the Queen of Wands. So in the upright position, and I'm going to leave it over Spotted Skunk as the Spotted Skunk clarifier because that's where she landed. She's passionate. She's, she's on fire. She's driven. She's motivated. She's got her emotions on her mind, but they're under control. Um, when she's in the reversed position, she's frenzied. She's disorganized. She's all over the place. Her passion, um, so in this position, in the upright position, she's pause, assess, and act. When she's in the reverse position, she's immediately spraying, she's, the, she's immediately taking defense. She's, she's the spotted skunk spraying, right? So um, with that, you're, you've got the wobble here um, and we've got stand up for yourself and where your wobble is and where your energetic choice is, is when you're standing up for yourself is keeping it healthy, keeping it emotionally grounded in the mind space. And it's okay to be passionate, but you don't want to be frenzied. You don't want to be out of control. It's keeping your balance in the handstand as you, you know, unleash your chemical warfare, so to speak. So, um, you know, spotted skunks, ha you know, has the energy of a wobble here. So let's see here. Valerian at the two at the bottom of the deck was the two of swords. 
Again, that peaceful meditative energy, the eye behind the eye, closing your, your outside eyes to look in internally and being in the cerebral space. And remember that the rigidity that you're releasing is dropping um, into the isolated hermit rather than the meditative productive hermit, the hermit that goes within so that the hermit can go out. Okay, so anything else for Valerian? All right. Um, landed in the sideways position, so Seven of Swords, which is the um, crisis and strife. So, um, you know, you have your sword of truth here. You can see the long, the long sword here that she carries with the seven of swords. And so as part of that wobble, whatever, whatever this outlying energy is that is causing you to feel a sense of defensiveness and needing to go in that space that where you're a little more universal um, where you're tapping into a greater level of consciousness that's outside of what this is right here, okay? You're needing to go out, up, and within because this is noise. This will guide you how to use that sort of truth because there is some conflict um, with the rigidity. So whatever this rigid stance is, um, perhaps you are... Um, feeling conflict over it or you've been in conflict over it and you need to release the conflict or it's how somebody else is feeling towards you but whatever that is you know again with that with that hermit card coming out um it's not you you need to confront it you need to go take care of it um your sort of truth has your back You've been guided through it. You you will come together and you will reach agreement. Um, but whatever the rigid stance is, whoever is the rigid person here um, needs to release that. Tell me more about self-healing and ripple outward, please. Um, doubt, the priestess. So... Um, okay, Sag, so it looks like there's, you know, there's some things causing you some self-doubt in the week ahead. Um, maybe there's been a little bit of a spiritual disconnect. Uh, maybe you followed some guidance that didn't turn out the way that you thought it was. Um, and maybe there was some misinterpretations around the guidance. Um, and you've got doubt around that because you're not seeing a specific outcome. Um, you aren't in charge of the outcomes. That's the divine. Your job is to flip this priestess up and follow your intuition. And um, this also is bringing forward a card that flipped out in the last, uh, when I started your last reading, which was the five of pentacles, which is a state of worry. So when you're in fear, doubt, and worry, it turns off your receptivity to the divine, which is bringing you, it's bringing you instant messaging this week. So, you know, WhatsApp from God, um, because that's, that's part of your self healing. That's part of your, <laughs> that's part of your ripple outward. So, um, this priestess, if you are in doubt, that is your ripple outward. That doubt, it carries with it a vibrational frequency, Sagittarius, that is a ripple outward. So with your priestess here, as well as your hermit, you have these, um, you know, these kind of divine cards coming in to remind you to tap into your intuition in the week ahead. Anything else for ripple outward? I feel the, I feel the push to go to human next. Yeah. Okay. So ripple outwards about sticking to your intuition there, Saggy. So human, what clarifiers do you have? Remember forgetting. Tell me more about remember forgetting. Reflective. Yeah, well, okay, that's kind of a validating message. So um, the Queen of Cups reflecting um, deep in your emotions, all of the versions of yourself that you have been. Remember when I was talking about 
remembering who you've been and bringing back those lost parts of yourself, that's what Queen of Cups is here to do. So um, super validating message there for you. And again, you're going to... Um, so maybe some of this doubt is doubt around what you're remembering as well. Maybe you're having memory come like sh like shadows of memory coming in and you're having doubt around its truth or its authenticity for somebody out there maybe. Um, but yeah, so you're definitely looking back. Somebody is looking back at those parts of themselves that they're bringing forward into their next cycle. So, and I feel positive that we've had some cycle cards where you've been closing out a cycle. Pretty much everybody has. I'm glad to see they're not, it's so nice to see new cards. Like, boy, reading during the coronavirus cycle has been um, pretty consistent in terms of what all the signs are experiencing with, you know, cycles happening and, you know, feeling locked in and caged in. It's been interesting. But let's get back to you. So, okay, yeah, you're really, um, so are you having a spiritual struggle this week, Saggy? Um, because we have the Hierophant, the Hierophant, however you'd like to say it, coming out mostly in reverse, which is a level of intolerance, which takes us back to the rigidity, which takes us back to the Seven of Swords in fighting a, some kind of a battle um, with someone or with a group of people. And I'm wondering about your stance here, Sagittarius, and if maybe you aren't being invited to step back and really look into um, your position on things. I think you're being invited to take your shoes off and step into somebody else's shoes here with this intolerance. Um, have you, are you judging somebody potentially, or are you being rigid about something that you've actually done and experienced yourself? And now you have a change of heart about it, but you don't allow somebody else the space to be that too. I don't know, um, for whoever that's for, uh, to get the Hierophant back into the upright position to help the energy of the human, to help remember forgetting and reflection with the queen of cups, you're tapping into that spirituality. Um, you're, you're, managing the wobble in the hermit stage you're managing the wobble here with the hierophant and you're going into that spiritual space you're going into your practice maybe you're going to spend some time reading um some time in prayer clearing your energy this week something of that nature but whatever it is um if you've forgotten a lost part of your spirituality or if you have potentially an intolerance around um, spiritual upbringing, perhaps, um, you know, and, and you've forgotten that initial connection, those initial connections that you had with the divine, regardless of, re you know, religious dogma. So um, there's a couple things going on here, but in the week ahead, Saggy, you look like you're going deep. And um, so let's see, let's, is there one more card for human, please? Yep, there is. Came out sideways. It is the crown. It is completion and embodiment. So you're going to be doing, it looks like a lot of energy management in the week ahead, Sagittarius. Um, these outlying energies and maybe also internal conflict energies. Um, we don't have a nine of swords here, but I feel like, you know, there could be some nine of swords energy in the mind space in terms of the wobble cards that we've had with the hermit sideways, the priestess um, came out sideways, the hero font um, in reverse um, with intolerance, and then the crown. So you're, you're going between completion and embodiment and unfulfillment. And so what you need to remember um, is what makes you happy and brings you into completion and embodiment and then releasing that energy of unfulfillment. There's a dragon here that's saying hello for somebody and looking intently at the transformation of this 
individual inside its light body, inside its Merkaba, inside its source. And, um, you know, maybe this dragon is an overseer or maybe this is um, a dragon that's coming in to test the um, strength of that light body that you've created for yourself. But whatever this is, you've got wobbles happening in the week ahead. And now that you're aware of it, you also have the empowerment and the ability to choose sort of um, our final card here, which is staying in your heart space and centering and grounding there to keep these energies high frequency for you. So um, Red Clover, wow, cards are already coming out for that one. Yeah, King of Wands, audacious. Getting those those emotional, um, the emotions that tend to drive under control and you're riding the emotional body now. You've got your passion harnessed. You By staying grounded and centered, you're making bold moves, Sagittarius. You're not getting stuck in the mind space with over meditation and isolation, which gets you overthinking. This is movement. This is fast action and it's passion and it has to do around staying centered in your heart. And the way that you're going to stay centered in your heart is to stay active in the things that are most important to you. So if you're creating something, for instance, if you have some sort of a new program that you're working or you're writing a book or you're creating a piece of art or a piece of music or you're working on a new recipe or creating something in the kitchen. Everything is art. Everything creative is. And I would say that whatever it is, staying focused on that and moving towards what it is you want to create and complete and embody um, will keep you centered and grounded in that energy. Where are we for time? Okay, we're okay. Let's get one more for Red Clover, please. So interesting, staying centered and grounded means being, is being actionable, like taking action towards what you want. One more for Red Clover. Oh, beautiful. Ten of Cups, prosperity. So as you take this action um, and you begin to feel those feelings of success, it grounds you. It puts you back into your heart space. It gets you out of those wobbles. Um, you know, your emotional well-being, your mental health, your physical health, your home space, all of that. So um, I want to know more about, we have the King of Wands here with that driven, audacious energy. And I know about, I mean, we know about stand up for yourself and, um, you know, spotted skunk and this queen of wands um, energy that's a little bit, you know, passionate and or frenzied. So with this passionate action of the king of wands, I want to know more about white tailed deer. Tell me more about pause, assess and act. That's the tower that came out in the last reading. And it came out almost... Oh, it came out upright. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, perfect. So, pause, assess, and act. In the upright position, this is the revelation. This is knowing that you're not going down with the ship, right? You have a higher awareness. And um, because it's the tower, this isn't something that you can do anything about, right? This isn't an action that you can take or... You know, this is just something that's happening and you holding yourself in the midst of it in in your excellence, in your spiritual practice, in your high priestess and in your hierophant and in your hermit and doing it in a healthy way because you also have the ability to be this guy going down in the flames if those wobbles get the best of you with the hermit sideways, the priestess sideways the Hierophant in reverse. So um, what's great about this is, you know, you know that the tower is here, which is just a realization. It could be a really positive realization as well, right? Like something really great coming in that's going to change your life. That's amazing. And if it's not that, 
um, you know that you can hold yourself in the embodiment in the middle of it. Now the eagle and the snake that he's carrying, is that a snake? Is sticking out for me. And so um, I don't know why because it's not giving me a message specifically. But if that's a message for one of you out there, um, you know, of course, I hope you always see messages in the cards too. Um, I know I do when I watch other readings, I get uh, hits and things that come through specifically for me. So, and then the other card is on pause, assess and act is resurrection, which is the temperance card in reverse. And what that embodies is the energy of a reversion or going backwards. So I would say that if you react to something in an instantaneous moment, that it's going to take you backwards and potentially as part of your tower moment, where if you can put this in the upright position by following the advice of deer here, which is to um, pause and assess before you move forward, you'll be able to bring that temperance or that resurrection. So yeah, success at the bottom of the deck, four of wands. So you're just battling some conflicting energies. And, you know, we're in um, uh, retrograde season right now. So a lot of energy from the past is coming up to give you the opportunity to resolve it. Now, right here with a white-tailed deer, um, you know, with the assess piece and the um, the tower. So if this if resurrection stays in reverse... Whatever it is that is coming in for you, if resurrection stays in reverse, you go down in flames. If you can bring resurrection upright with an evolution, this tower, you stand in the middle of it. This is being able to be in the middle of something and not have it take you down, right? Do you see how all this flaming debris, right? Um, coronavirus has been that way for me. Coronavirus has been an absolute tower moment for so many people in my life, and it has been for me too. And yet this has been one of the happiest, most productive times of my life um, because of the isolation that I've been in. So you can choose how you view your tower moment because while we might be victims to things that are outside of ourselves, at the end of the day, Sagittarius it is the work you do within your inner body, your spiritual body, and your mental body that pulls you out above that and allows you to transcend and transform it into a resurrection, into a full evolution. And taking a moment to pause before you move is going to bring about your four of wands, which is walking into the light in that successful situation. So this little crowd of naysayers here turns into your crowd of cheerleaders, okay? It's all in how you make the approach and how you handle yourself. You can't control other people, Sagittarius. You can only control your reaction to any given situation at any given time. So really interesting reading this week. Um, what will Sagittarius benefit from surrendering in the week ahead, please? What will Sagittarius benefit from surrendering in the week ahead? Sag, you've got a four of wands, a ten of cups here. Um, you've got some really beautiful cards. This king of wands. Um, I mean, you do have some conflict and some tower energy. And again, that doesn't have to be a big, huge thing, right? It's just something that you're in the awareness of. You're aware of the energy and you're aware that you have choices as that energy moves in and out of your life, right? Energy's dynamic and there's always versions of energy moving in and out of your life. Conflict energy, um, happiness energy, joy energy, it all rotates. It's all part of the will of flow. So what will Saggy benefit from surrendering in the week ahead, please? This one wants to come out. Surrender to non-action. Now is the time to be still and not act. Simply breathe and focus on your own power. Let others come to you. So remember, non-action, meditation, not isolation. 
you're releasing you're releasing fear doubt and worry and you're embracing abundance awareness mindfulness and your own power so surrendering to non-action in the week ahead um, i'm going to grab this card surrender resentments holding on to resentments only poisons you try to forgive others for their shortcomings and keep moving forward towards positive situations in your life. So this is that um, Valerian energy that you're being asked to release. Um, the release rigidity, right? Um, so those resentments and those rigid things that are keeping you stuck. Uh, we had intolerance. We had the Hierophant come out in reverse. So um, those are the things that will contract your energy and create the contrast or the unwanted results of your manifestation. So surrendering those resentments in the week ahead. And I can't believe this is still filming. We're at 35 minutes, so I'm going to do bottom of the deck. Surrender stubbornness, release rigidity, intolerance. Again, if you're tensing up or taking a rigid stance about something, gently observe yourself and become more yielding. This will help you communicate more lovingly with others and yourself. Pause, assess, act, release the stubborn stance that you have on something. I love you, Saggy. I'll see you next time. Bye.